Imagine yourself, if you will, in the heart of the West Country. The West Country. What sort of images does it conjure in your mind? Children playing on sun-drenched beaches, paddling in clear blue-green water, cream teas, idyllic. Well, perhaps. Last summer I rented a cottage in Devon. Local people told me a story of a visitor who deliberately offended the ancient laws of the countryside, a visitor who should have known better, for she'd grown up in Devon. But even as a child, she had displayed disturbing antisocial tendencies. We are still free. Take a chance on me. You do my let me know. Oh, it was great. Oh, it was great. They played this three times at the disco last night, Faye. Why didn't you ever come? I wore that new gold top, you know, really tight. When I told you I got in dingles. Kev couldn't keep his eyes off me, I swear it. Kevin Elkins is an uneducated bore. I can't imagine what you see in him. Blonde hair, gorgeous body. You are a fool, Jenny. Turn that thing off now, please. Hey, it's great. You do your homework, ain't you? It's only history. Don't take long to write about conditions in the workhouses. Gloom, doom, gloom, doom, gloom, Shut doom. Shut up, Jenny. Yes, I've done the workhouses and the French, which is more than you've done. And now I want to work on my carol. Oh, is that the one you're putting in for that church competition? Honestly, how'd you do it, Faye? Well, how'd you know what notes to put? I wouldn't have the vaguest idea. Naturally, you wouldn't. Most of your talent goes into pursuing the male members of 5B. Oh, come on, Faye. Don't be like that. There's nothing wrong with boys. It's only fun. <laughs> Will you turn that thing off? OK, OK. Imagine yourself, if you will, in the heart of the West Country. The West Country. What sort of images does it conjure in your mind? Children playing on sun-drenched beaches, paddling in clear blue-green water, cream teas, idyllic. Well, perhaps. Last summer I rented a cottage in Devon. Local people told me a story of a visitor who deliberately offended the ancient laws of the countryside, a visitor who should have known better, for she'd grown up in Devon. But even as a child, she had displayed disturbing antisocial tendencies. We are still free. Take a chance on me. You do my let me know. Oh, it was great. Oh, it was great. They played this three times at the disco last night, Faye. Why didn't you ever come? I wore that new gold top, you know, really tight. When I told you I got in dingles, Kev couldn't keep his eyes off me, I swear it. Kevin Elkins is an uneducated bore. I can't imagine what you see in him. Blonde hair, gorgeous body. You are a fool, Jenny. Turn that thing off now, please. Oh, hey, it's great. You do your homework, ain't you? It's only history. Don't take long to write about conditions in the workhouses. Gloom, doom, gloom, doom, gloom, Shut doom. Shut up, Jenny. Yes, I've done the workhouses and the French, which is more than you've done. And now I want to work on my carol. Oh, is that the one you're putting in for that church competition? Honestly, how'd you do it, Faye? Well, how'd you know what notes to put? I wouldn't have the vaguest idea. Naturally, you wouldn't. Most of your talent goes into pursuing the male members of 5B. Oh, come on, Faye. Don't be like that. There's nothing wrong with boys. It's only fun. <laughs> Will you turn that thing off? OK, OK. Let's just hear the end of this, then I will, all right? Now! I said now! Poor Faye. It's absolutely dead. I'll have to turn it off in a minute. I've got to do the carol. I told you. Here. You can have this. What is it? The manuscript of my folk song, of course. Hmm. Sorry about the radio, but you don't understand. When I have an idea, I have to get it down, or it goes. Forever. Well, look at you. What's that Fabian doing now then, love? Nothing really, Mum. She broke my radio oh. by accident. And you saved up all that Saturday morning money from Hazlitt's to buy it. It's just an accident, Mum. Too indulged she's been, and that's a fact. Only one child in that late in the day. Little you, lamb, isn't in it? Mary and Sid creeping round whenever she wants to practice. Won't even have Coronation Street on, if you please. Mary has to come round here next day asking me what happened. 
Spoiled, that's what she is, spoiled. But she's really clever, Mum. With her music, I mean. They put on that musical play of hers at school last Christmas. You liked that, you know you did. Maybe I did. Green goddess, indeed. What sort of a title is that? Give the radio to your dad. He'll make something of it. Mark my words, that Fay Langton. Ah, <laughs> uh, special that, eh, Nicola? That Fay Langton? Yeah. I suppose that is her stuff you've been listening to. No, the reason you'd be tuned into Radio 3, is there? Oh, you think I'm an absolute moron, don't you? You know what I think about you. Oh, there. <laughs> no, I'm just a bit worried that noise would curdle your milk. Oh, honestly, Paul. Looks as if she drinks curdle milk, doesn't she? Yeah. Now, come on, darling. You drink up, then I can get up. Actually, I, I think she quite liked the music. Oh. oh, look. She's smiling, aren't you, Nicola? It's more than her father does, then. And that smile's win. You. Those operas have been big successes. Now, you remember I showed you that bit about her last month in the paper. Oh, yeah. A local girl makes good, I remember. Fantastic acclaim for a new opera, Polka... Pocahontas. Uh, even better than a lyrical in the dream time. Better even than her acclaimed Marcella Druzy. Druz? Uh, that marvellous young British woman composer. And who listens to them all? Not ordinary people. It's just tuneless mush. It's great music. I don't understand it, really, but I know it's good. They wouldn't put them on in Covent Garden in Milan if they weren't good, would they? Anyway, you don't care one way or another about the music. You just don't like her. Well, scarcely know her, do I? You want some coffee? No, thanks. Well, we got that music college in London just about when we started to see each other, and then we... Well, we started making babies. A bit too soon. <laughs> Melanie must have been born soon after Faye left. And I've even some vague memory of you asking her to be Mal's godmother. I even dimly remember her accepting, and then failing to turn up at a christening. Like a fairy godmother in reverse. Oh, Faye was busy. You'd hardly expect her to drop rehearsals when it was her first big work, could you? Just to come hurtling down to Exeter for a short church service and my mum's cream tea? Absolutely nothing wrong with your mum's cream teas. Well, it's not that so much. It's just, well, she doesn't give a damn about Mel. Has she ever sent her a present? A birthday card? Did you get in touch when Samantha was born? Did she help? Oh, come on, Paul. She sent me a postcard from New York last Christmas when I told her I was pregnant again. Oh. And what did she write? <laughs> Actually, it was quite funny for her. So, three children for you, three uppers for me. <laughs> I'll overtake you yet. And you reckon that's funny, do you? Well, it sounds a bit like jealousy to me. Oh, honestly, you got it wrong, Paul. She's just got lashings of artistic temperament. Right soft, you are. <laughs> Well, I'm not wasting more time whittering on about Faye Langton. I'll just do myself a bit of toast and I'm away off to bed. Any day tomorrow. Oh, Paul, it's half term. We said we'd take the kids down to the coast. To line, maybe. I know, love, I'm sorry. There's oh. just too much on at the garage. All them holidaymakers dash into Cornwall and breaking down on the bypass. I've got to get them going again, haven't I? I can't turn away good cash. Not with another mouth to feed. Oh, well, can't John and Mr Woodward cope? No way. Not tomorrow, anyway. It leaves off midweek, though. Wednesday, maybe? We'll go there. Oh, I believe that when I see it. Oh, OK, then. I'll take them to Mum's instead. Yeah, they love being let loose in that garden and mucking about in the stream. And your mother can drool over Nicola to her heart's content. Oh, yeah. Have a good lie-in, though, before you go. Wednesday, I promise. <sighs> Hello? Hello? Who's that? Hello? Jenny? It's Faye. F Faye? F Faye Langton? Oh, oh, is it you, Faye? Really? Obviously it's me. I've just told you. Well, well Faye, after all this time, oh, I haven't seen you for ages. It's funny, I was just listening to your Pocahontas last night. The baby really liked it. Did you realise I'd had the baby? Did you get my card? It's another little girl. Jenny, I'm in Menet Petherton, about 12 miles from you. I've bought a cottage here to work in. Listen, I want you to come and see me. Now. Now? Oh, Faye, it's only 6.30. Come as soon as you can, then. But it must be today. Well, yes, well, I'd love to, of course. But why don't you come here? Nicola's only three weeks old, you see. And it's Melanie and Samantha's half-term. Mel would love to see her godmother. She's terribly proud of you, even though you... Jenny, 
Oh, come on, Faye. It'll be lovely to chat, hear about what you've been doing, London, your tour to America. I read about that in the Western Morning News. Oh, Faye, you're really famous. Who'd have thought it? You must come to me, Jenny, today. And stay the night. Oh. That's important. You must stay the night. Oh, well, that's really nice of you, Faye, but it's a bit difficult, you see. The children and Paul, he's out of work now. It's and... the new opera, you see, Jenny. It's the best thing I've ever done. I don't care about anything else. And I think if someone else is here, they won't come. Sorry? What do you say? What do you mean, Faye? Is something the matter? The matter? I must finish the Morrigan, Jenny. I'm so close. If you were here, I could work through the night. It will be done by morning. Then I can go. Well, why can't you go now? Finish the opera in London. What's the matter? Oh, some of the local lads being difficult. I know that there is some feeling in the villages about Londoners buying up local houses and forcing the prices up. I mean, even poor... You never did understand, did you? If I don't finish it now, I'll lose it. I've got to finish it tonight. I really need you, Jenny. Oh, well, OK, then. Melanie and Sam are going to Mum's anyway. Look, give me a couple of hours to get them sorted out. Where are you, exactly? It's the rookery. Menet Petherton. It's the only cottage up the first lane to the left as you come in on the Exeter Road. Get here as quickly as you can, Jenny. I've got to work. Oh. Oh. Well. Oh, I bet that, darling. You didn't know your mum had one famous lady for a friend, did you? Oh, come on. Oh, clean up it for you. Come on, kids. Time to get up. No, afraid not. Dad's got to work. We'll go Wednesday. I tell you what, how about going to Granny's today? Think of our cream teas. Oh, yeah. Can we play the string? Well, yeah, if you promise me you'll be very careful. Oh. By the way, by the way, guess who I've just had a phone call from? The Donna. John Major. Oh, that'll be the day. Wants my personal advice on how to run the economy, of course. No, no, it's my friend. Faye, your godmother, Mel. That's why I'm going to leave you at Granny's. I'm going to see Faye today. She's really famous, isn't she? Can't I come with you, Mum? Oh, no, not today, Mel. But I may bring her back with me tomorrow. Oh, great. Bye and bye and bye and bye. You're only jealous. Yeah. Oh, well, you're the parents. You don't even know. They even care. Mine's famous. Oh, no, 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 you two. Will you friend. please be fine? Get those clothes on. I'm not going to say... OK, so that was the Men at Petherton sign. Now, what did she say first to the left? Oh, well, this didn't look right, does it? This lane just seems to be going on and on. Ooh, I don't know if I'd want to live here. Give me Exeter every time. No shops, no cinema, no life, no... Oh, God! <gasps> oh, oh, I'm sorry, darling. I'm not that they're there. Don't, don't, don't cry. Don't do anything. Oh, stupid bird. Practically committed suicide. I didn't feel a bump, though. Oh, hang on. Let's let's have a look. No, nothing. Oh, wow. We're just not country girls, as like to are we? We must find Faye if we can. Oh, God. There's somebody at last. People actually do live here. I was beginning to wonder. Hello? 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 Oh, excuse me. Uh, I, I'm looking for a cottage called the Rookery. Is this the right way? Thought I heard a car a while back. Put your brakes on a bit sharpish, didn't you? Shouldn't be going too fast around these twists, my dear. Oh, well, I don't think I actually was going too fast. It's just that living in Exeter, you don't expect great big black birds to suddenly dive bomb you. Honestly, it, it came so close, I thought I'd hit it, but there was nothing. There wouldn't be. You need to be careful here, especially with the little one. Going to the rookery then, are you? Yeah. yeah not that it's a rookery now. It isn't for hire now, you know, the cottage. It is occupied by a lady from London. Musician type, they say. Oh, yeah, she's my friend, you see. We're visiting. Oh, oh is that all? Well, then, it's just behind those trees, you see, next bar. Oh, stupid of me. I'm hopeless at finding things. Well, thanks. I hope Faye's in. Seems ever so quiet. Yes, it's quiet, all right. I had all the buggers shut, you see. Sorry. Maybe it is not quite the right place for a lady from London, is all I'm saying. Oh, she's not really from London. <laughs> well, I mean, she is now, but she was born in Exeter, just like me. Well, I wouldn't have guessed that, my dear. Didn't like them from the start, did she? Who? Birds. Oh, I see. She had some bird shot, you mean. She said something about the people here being a bit... Well, a a antagonistic, I suppose. Something about not feeling quite comfortable here. Well, well anyway. Well, oh, it was because of the birds. 
Yeah, well, people often shoot birds in the country, don't they? Not old tribe of them, just because we want quiet. Oh. You're taking the baby in there, are you? Why? Oh, oh, is there something wrong with the water? Well, it's a long way from the village, isn't it? Not on the mains. Never mind. I'll boil it. I'm only staying till tomorrow. Stay in the night, are you? I don't know as I do that, my dear. Proper cold and damp at all places. Not too good for the little one. Well, I promise, though. Oh, well, none of my business, I suppose. I don't, I don't know as you'll like it, though. Too quiet for you, sophisticated Exeter lot. <laughs> I think you may just possibly be getting at me, Mr... Batcombe. Um... No, not at you, my dear. Come on up with me to the cottage and have a cup of coffee. I'll introduce you to Faye. She's really quite a famous composer, you know. Famous or not, she's none too popular around here. Foolish. Foolish to kill the birds. It was the sound of them dying. The sound of them dying, screaming that where we heard them in the village. Rooks were here a long time before her, when the woods stretched from the moor to the sea. No, a bit too late for coffee for me, thanks all the same, my dear. It's time for my lunch and more hedging to do afterwards. No need to stay the night, you know. Baby will sleep better in her own home, I reckon. Well... I'll think about it, promise. Bye. Thanks. Just round here? Well. Ooh, better lift you out. There we are, darling. Here we are. Gently did it. Oh, Faye. Look that bad, do I? Well, no, no, of course not. Well, you changed, of course. Well, so have I. Really fat since this last baby. I have to go back to the aerobic classes soon. You look a bit tired, I suppose. It... Yes, they certainly don't let me sleep. Don't look at me like that, Jenny. I know what I look like. Oh, are you ill then, Faye? Working hard, that's all. And I'm nearly there, Jenny. Nearly. <coughs> What's the matter? Oh, there's nothing. <coughs> Stupid. Oh, come on, let's go in. Leave me to the coffee. You look as if you could do with some. I certainly could after ranging around the countryside trying to find you. Oh, I, I had to bring Nicola. I couldn't leave her with Mum. Still breastfeeding, you see. Oh. Could you just hold her while I get the bag? So... <laughs> well, you don't mind, do you? Surely. I, I didn't think you'd bring the baby. Well, it can't be helped. Only one more night. <laughs> come on. It's a bit run down, isn't it, Faye? Somehow I don't see this as you at all. Why did you buy it? A mistake. I thought the quiet for working. Ah, here we are. It was advertised in the Times. It seemed just the place to finish the Morrigan. So much noise in London. Even when you double glaze, you can still feel the vibrations of the traffic. But it was a mistake. Now, where's the cooker? Let's get this kettle on. Feathers. Blood on them. All over the top of it. Honestly, Faye. Some cat must have got in. Oh, we'll have to shut the doors and windows tonight. I can't risk the baby. It's no good. Shutting doors and windows. They were so noisy, you see. Who were? Rooks. Bloody rooks. Obviously, I had to get rid of them. Not that the damn locals were any help. Oh, talking to locals, I met a chap in the lane. Mr. Batcombe. I think he must have been from the village. Know him. Mumbled something about you killing some birds or something. Not me, personally. None of the villagers wanted to know. I had to get a firm from Plymouth in the end. Three men with guns. And you wouldn't believe what they charged. Did you have to do that, Faye? Don't mention it to Melanie if you see her, will you? Melanie? My youngest daughter. Your goddaughter. She's a passionate member of the RSPCA. Probably a budding animal liver, Paul says. Look, it's just that she would be very upset if she knew you'd had them killed. She really admires you, you see. They got in the way of the music wretched things. Whenever I got to a really complicated bit, the cacophony. They did it deliberately. Mocking me. Oh, come on, Faye. Mocking me, Jenny. But I dealt with them. The men didn't want to shoot the fledglings, but I told them, you shake them down from the trees, smash them. So many of them. Bodies everywhere, stinking. And the firm didn't clean up after them. I had to spend the afternoon shoveling up. So many. Oh, God. Honestly, Faye, how could you do such a thing? I have told you, Jenny. Do I have to go on explaining? It's none of your business anyway, all right, is it? All right, Faye. All right. What's done's done, obviously. It was all right, though. When I could still hear that coin. In your mind, you mean? 
Oh, Faye. I knew I could work the sounds into the music. The last great scene, Jenny, at the very end of the opera, when the Morrigan calls the ravens to her for the great attack on Kukalin. <laughs> Who? Oh, who's this Morrigan? <laughs> it's a Celtic legend, preserved in early medieval Irish manuscripts, but it's pagan, really. The Morrigan was the dark goddess of battle, destruction, death. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to have her centre stage in her feathered cloak, half woman, half raven. Oh, look, it doesn't matter, Jenny. It, it's all there in the opera. But it, it's the best thing I've ever done. The final great summoning. I, 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 I can hear it. Well, nearly, anyway. Something's missing still, but I'm so nearly there. That's why I need you here. Oh... I'll make the coffee now. Shall I clean the place up a bit? Nicholas sleeps for hours. I'll have plenty of time. Certainly need it. Ooh, look, more of those damn feathers. They flew everywhere. Dying, wounded. No, don't, don't, don't touch them, Jenny. I expect they're crawling fleas. And I don't want you to play housewife. You just stay in the same room with me while I work. When it gets dark, it's horrible watching what I do. Don't talk. Just sit. Read, knit, I don't care. Does that child cry much? Perhaps she should stay in the car. Oh, I'm not leaving her in the car, Faye. Honestly, the very idea. Oh, look, you needn't worry. I'll sit with you, Faye, if that's what you want. And you needn't bother about Nicola. She's a fat, contented young madam, far too well mannered to cry in someone else's house. No, no, that's not it. No, that's not it. Now, come on, Faye. Look, you refuse to come and eat supper in the kitchen, so I brought it in on a tray. Just take it. I told break. you, Jenny, I don't want to eat. It's so nearly finished. Just one thing missing. The summoning. The final great cry. <laughs> she stands, the Morrigan, in her cloak of bloody feathers, and she calls the birds of night to her. Ooh, it's getting dark. Somehow you think the light will last forever on these May evenings, but it never does. Well, if you won't eat this, I'll just clear the tray then. Oh, Jenny, yes. just stop talking! <sighs> Stay here, please, you promised. It's so nearly done. They, they don't want me to finish this. They don't want me to have power over them. They won't let me get hold of the notes of the summoning. It must be frantic. Terrible! Like the way the rooks scream when you kill them, I suppose. Oh, Faye, I'm sorry. Look, I didn't mean that. No, no that, 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 that's all right, Jenny. Yes, of course. Of course, that's it. That's it. That's it. The raucous, dying, screaming. That is the summoning. Oh, God, Faye. Look, honestly, it can't be good for you to get so involved with your work. No, that's not it. Oh, God. More of those feathers on the tray now. Where are they coming from? I'm going to phone Paul. And I'm going to tell him to make up the bed and Melanie's room for you. I'm going to warn him we may be coming in the middle of the night. Oh, don't leave me, Jenny. It's too dark. They're stronger in the dark. They'll stop me. Oh, Faye, Nicola will keep you company, won't you, darling? It's only for a minute, Faye. No. Look, I'm <laughs> going to phone... Exeter 234. Oh, it's me. Listen, I'm at Faye's. Did you get my note? Thank goodness. The place was in darkness. I didn't know where you and the children no, were. listen. She's hired a cottage here in Men at Petherton to finish an opera. But there's something terribly wrong. Wrong? No, I know this is the back of beyond, but it's more than that. Paul, this place is just ghastly. And I think Faye's having a nervous breakdown. Oh. And I don't think I can cold much longer. Paul, please, can you come? What? Now? Oh, look, darling, I just got in. You come home if everything's as bad as you say. Well, come on now, you've got the car. What are you waiting for? Oh, please, Paul. All right, bring Faye as well, I suppose, if she's in such a bad way. <gasps> Jenny? Jenny! Just a minute. I've got to look outside. No, Jenny, come back! Oh. Paul. She said she'd shot all the birds, but 
But you can't have. They're there, outside, covering the trees. There's so many of them. I think they're waiting. Birds? What, what birds? Jenny, are you all right? Jen, what's going oh, on? God, Paul, I don't know. They, they slammed the door to the music room. Who has? What the hell's going on? What? They're breaking all the windows. And the baby's in there. Where, where is she? God, Paul. There are feathers everywhere. They're all spattered with blood. They don't want her to finish the ceremony, to learn their secrets, and they want to punish her for what she did to them. But the baby's there. Oh, God. Onto the manuscript. The last notes. Got it. Got it. You couldn't stop me, you bastards. I beat you. I beat you. No. No, no, no. Leave the manuscript alone. No. You want revenge? An eye for an eye? Then take, take the baby! You, do, you don't want me! Take the baby! My baby! Please, Faye, just get... Just get on the door! Faye, will you let me in? Will you let me in? Take the baby. Take the baby. Oh, She is led by the door. She's out cold. Oh, my God. Oh, oh she's coming round. Oh. Come on, Oh, 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 oh thank God. So, Where's Nicola? Huh? Oh, i got to get him. The baby. It's all right, my dear. Don't worry. In here, is she? Yes. The door's stuck. Give me a hand, lad. Right. Oh. 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 oh, my God. Hey. Broken glass, feathers everywhere, covering her body, stuffed up her nose and her mouth. What are you talking about, Jen? They're only feathers. But I think Faye may have had a heart attack. Well, can't you see them? They're all over her. Dark feathers like a bloody shroud. They broke through the window to get to her. Look at all the glass. Oh, if it's cut the baby. What? Paul, where's Nicola? She's not in the carry cot. They've taken... The baby! No, it's okay, darling, it's okay. She's here. By Faye. Oh, look, darling, she's right here. Surely you can see her? Well, she's hidden by all the feathers. I can't see her. Here, I'll fetch her for you. Oh, oh come on, sweetheart. Come to your mum. She's oh. in a feral state about you. But you're all right, aren't you? Don't let the feathers touch her. There aren't any feathers, Jenny. No broken glass. The window isn't even broken. Oh, sit down, darling. You aren't seeing straight yet. It's only bits of the manuscript. Faye must have shredded it to pieces before she fell. Poor girl. What kind of possessed her to do that? Not Faye. She wouldn't have destroyed her own opera. It was the greatest thing she ever done, she told me. It was them. With the ghost birds. Jenny, there aren't any birds. Oh, look. I'll go and phone for an ambulance. So hang on now, darling. Not much longer and then we can go home. They were here, in the hall, in the music room. They destroyed the manuscript before they killed her. They enjoyed her despair, enjoyed her death. They're the servants of Morrigan. Yeah, I believe you, my dear. Though I shouldn't try to convince your husband if I were you. Birds from the dark time, they are. We know them round here. And your friend, well, I can't say I took to her, but there was maybe a bit more to her than I thought. I'm trying to protect little and like that under her outstretched hand. Hey, protect my baby. What? I heard her, Mr. Batcombe, through the door. I heard her. She wanted a bargain with them to sacrifice my baby for the music. But they showed more mercy than she did, didn't they? They spared my baby. Look, do you see? Here in her hair. I see it, my dear. Just one soft, tiny black feather laid like an offering. Dark feathers. Dark mercy. A sign of their mercy. That's what it is, isn't it, Mr. Batcom? A sign of mercy? Or a sign of revenge to come? Dark feathers.
a sign of mercy? Possibly. But it can be patient, deadly patient, this darker, older country. If its ancient spirits can destroy the guilty, those who offend against them, those who seek to pry into their secrets, may they not also one day come hunting for the innocent and destroy them, even an innocent baby? Faye was Joanna Myers and Jenny Emily Richard. Jenny's mother, Melinda Walker, Mr. Batcombe, Jonathan Adams. Paul, Matthew Morgan. Jenny as a girl, Cyril Jenkins, and Faye as a girl, Katie Jenkins. Dark Feathers was written by Denise Sims and directed by Martin Jenkins. I am Edward de Souza, the man in black. Next week's story, Playing God, is about the all too familiar problem of a teenager running away from home and falling into unscrupulous hands. <laughs>